Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, today is our lecture number eight on the introduction to bridge engineering. If you have any questions in the previous lectures, you can ask for questions. If there are no questions, we'll begin discussing our new lecture. Any question? Okay, in today's lecture, first of all, uh, the, the topics included are introduction, and then bridge components, types of bridges, loads for bridge design. And then we will be talking specifically about the analysis and design of simply supported reinforced concrete slab bridges, one example, and finally, famous bridges in the world. Objectives of the lecture are that at the end of this lecture, the students will be able to differentiate between a bridge and culvert, explain how different type of bridges resist loads, analyze and design simply supported RC slab bridges. <clears throat> Bridge uh, is defined as a structure having an opening not less than six meter or six thousand millimeter that forms part of a highway or over or under which the highway passes. Structures uh, having an opening less than six meter are generally called as culverts. So uh, this is the definition of H2 code that all those structures uh, which have an opening not less than six meter will be called as culverts and more than six meter will be called as bridges although from the structural point of view there may not be any difference uh, from the material and the uh, structural formation point of view there can be many types of culverts in bridges now you can see a bridge in the uh, figure on the left this is an actual picture of a bridge where a truss arch bridge has been shown in the picture in the middle picture you can see a unicell uh, box culvert reinforced concrete box culvert on the extreme right picture you can see a three cell box culvert <coughs> You know that bridge is a key element in transportation system because it controls the capacity of the system, uh, which means that uh, the overall traffic, the if bridge is narrow, then the number of vehicle per uh, unit second or minute will be will depend on the vehicle passing over a bridge. No matter. Uh, how wide a highway is. Uh, and it is the highest cost per mile of the system. You know that bridge, bridge, bridge is a costly structural element. Uh, so in bridges, if the bridge fails, the system fails. As you can see in this picture, that uh, there are two places connected by a bridge across a river. So if bridge collapses, then these two locations, maybe cities or maybe towns, maybe continents, will be. Components of a typical bridge. There are two uh, major components of a typical bridge. One is superstructure and the other is substructure. Superstructure are uh, those superstructure consist of those structural parts of the bridge. Span. And substructural parts of the bridge are those which support the horizontal span. Substructure uh, is not necessarily uh, part of the structure below the ground. As you can see in this picture, that the horizontal span in this one, which is basically the deck and the slab. The deck, uh, the deck uh, is slab and girders. Girders in the slab, they will form the superstructure part. And uh, any uh, all all the structural members uh, below the superstructure will be called as uh, substructure, which includes a bearing, bearing, and then piers, and pile cap, and piles. Okay, and also abutments. Okay. <clears throat> uh, 
can see this bearing paired uh, in a close view. The bearing paired uh, is uh, uh, composed of uh, thin steel. smoothly transfer forces from the girder to the piers in abutments because uh, whenever a vehicle enters a bridge uh, it will produce some vibrations and those vibrations may cause a collision between the two hard surfaces like uh, the girder and the pier a girder, if if the if a girder is kept directly on a pier or abutment, then the these two elements made of concrete will collide with each other and may cause localized crushing. So for this reason, a bearing pair is kept uh, between these two elements, usually beneath the girder, in order to smoothly transfer vibrations and all gravity loads from the superstructure to sub substructure. This is an actual picture where the different parts of the bridge reinforced concrete uh, girder bridge have, have been shown. You can see in the bridge, this is a, these are girders, longitudinal girders. These girders may be reinforced concrete or pre stressed girders. Uh, the, the slab or deck, uh, the slab in the slab is uh, the horizontal member which. Uh, we call this slab in reinforced concrete building systems in bridges is called as deck so deck is nothing but a reinforced concrete slab on which the vehicle actually runs so this deck is a horizontal member in the reinforced concrete slab and uh, this slab is connected this slab is usually reinforced concrete in situ uh, cast slab not a pre-stressed slab, uh, and uh, you can also see uh, in the picture diaphragms. These are called diaphragms, are beam diaphragms, and these are horizontal thin members, horizontal thin members which connect girders through the depth of the girders. Uh, these are provided in order to uh, in order to spread the load of the vehicle evenly to all the girders. Because if these uh, diaphragms are not provided uh, in the transverse direction to connect the girders uh, through the depth of the girders, then uh, it is quite possible that uh, when vehicle runs on the deck and the deck is connected to the girders, one of the girders is loaded more than the other girders. So for this reason, to evenly distribute the live load from the uh, vehicles from the vehicles coming on the slab and then transfer to the girders these uh, diaphragms are provided in transverse direction as shown in this figure it's some some distances you can see in the picture uh, some diaphragms okay are provided in this picture one two three four five at certain distances <coughs> depending on the situation Okay, uh, then uh, you see a transom. Transom is a horizontal member provided uh, above uh, the pier. And pier is a vertical member which we call a column in reinforced concrete buildings. Uh, here in bridge engineering, we call that vertical element as pier. Pier may be one or more uh, according to the requirements. The horizontal member above the pier which supports the girders is called a transom or pier cap. Okay, pier is a vertical member, as I said earlier, and its uh, function is just like a column in buildings. Now, the load from the girders is transferred to the transom, and from transom, it is transferred to the piers, and then uh, from the pier, it uh, goes to the pile cap. Pile cap is a thick reinforced concrete slab, as shown in this figure on the right uh, bottom. And this is a thick reinforced concrete slab. And then from the pile cap, 
uh, it is uh, the load is transferred to the piles and from the piles it goes deep into the ground and the load is transferred from the piles either by friction or by bearing or both the bridges uh, can be classified in many ways according to the material if this classification is made there will be concrete steel and wooden bridges if bridges are classified according to usage then pedestrian highway or railroad bridges uh, and if, if bridges are classified according to span then there will be short medium or long types of bridges if according to the structural form the bridges are classified then there will be slab bridges girder bridges truss bridges arch bridges suspension bridges and cable stay bridges there can be many many types according to the criteria of uh, classification however uh, the ishto uh, has defined bridges according to the following criteria and it says that uh, uh, if the location of the main it depends on the location of the main structural elements relative to the surface on which the user travels so basically a superstructure and substructure so if main structure is below the deck line which you can uh, readily imagine that these will be mainly arch type of bridges if main structure is below the deck line deck is the slab on which the vehicle runs so main structure below the deck line means that arches will be provided to support the load of the deck or slab if main structure is above the deck line then mostly the suspension cable type of bridges will fall in this category because they will hold the bridge deck by suspension and if main structure coincide with the deck line so mostly reinforced concrete slab and girder bridges will fall in this category now we will discuss uh, all of these three types uh, the arch bridges truss arch bridges masonry arch bridges concrete arch the steel truss and steel deck truss so all types of arch bridges fall in this category because the main uh, structural element which supports the deck is below the deck line uh, these are some pictures of masonry arch uh, and steel deck truss arch this is a concrete arch um, picture on the left and steel truss arch bridge on the right the main uh, features of this type of uh, bridge are that with arch shape gravity loads are transmitted to the supports primarily by axial compressive forces as you know this and at the supports both vertical and horizontal reaction must be resisted the arch form is basically intended to reduce bending movements in the superstructure and uh, the most suitable site for this form of structure is a valley with the arch foundation located on dry rock slopes because there will be very high reactions both horizontal and vertical they must be resisted if uh, uh, an arch is given uh, if uh, if an arch is not given in a valley we are naturally there uh, is a dry rock slopes to resist these horizontal forces then heavy anchor blocks must be given to resist this horizontal reaction which may uh, increase the cost of the bridge uh, and the conventional curve arch rib may have high fabrication and erection cost although this may be controlled by skill labor so this is one of the disadvantages of the arch bridges that the fabrication cost will be high and uh, the classic arch form uh, tends to favor concrete as a construction material because as you know that concrete is good in compression but weak in tension and in arches uh, in most of the arches uh, there will be only compressive forces and concrete is good in compression so concrete is a favorable material for arches when main structure is above the deck line all types of suspension bridges fall in this category but there are a few other bridges like cable stayed and through truss bridges which also fall in this category on the left you can see a suspension bridge a suspension bridge basically consists of uh, cables uh, which are in tension and these cables are connected with hangers or stringers and stringers are then further connected to the 
bridge deck. So the bridge deck load is taken by the hangers you know, or stringers, and then the load is transferred to the cables. And from the cable, it goes to the towers, and from the towers, it goes to the anchor block on both ends of the bridge. Okay. You can see also in the picture on the right, the same suspension cable bridge. This is a cable state bridge, unlike suspension bridges uh, in this cable state type of bridges. The cables are directly connected from the tower to the bridge. There are no hangers in the system. All the cables are radiating outward from the tower and connected to the bridge deck directly. So this is the difference between the cable state and suspension bridge. This is a through truss arch bridge where the trusses are provided on both sides of the bridge and uh, the vehicle will pass through this so because uh, the vehicle passes through this is called a through truss bridge and these trusses are planar trusses on both sides of the bridges and they are more or less act like an inverted uh, beam uh, they will resist all the forces in the planar direction and uh, in this way uh, they will Resist the loads. Some features of a suspension cable bridges. Uh, in the suspension cable bridges, the flexible cables of a suspension bridge are shaped and supported to transfer major loads to towers and encouraged by direct tension. The deck is hung from the cable by hangers constructed of high strength wire ropes and tension. This use of high strength steel and tension leads to an economical structure. The problem with the uh, suspension bridges. Uh, is uh, the aerodynamic movements of the bridges and these aerodynamic movements of the bridges can be uh, controlled or prevented if stiffening trusses as shown in this figure on the left bottom are given uh, sometimes these uh, bridges are the, the deck of the bridge is uh, fastened or tight also to the anchor block on both sides of the bridge, as you might have seen in suspension bridges in some northern areas. Uh, so if stiffening trusses cannot be provided for some reason, then these bridge deck are uh, fastened uh, to the anchor block on both sides of the bridge in order to control the aerodynamic movements during the vehicular movements and also during the winds. Salient features of cable straight bridges. As compared with suspension bridges, the cables are straight rather than curved, and as a result, stiffness is greater. And aerodynamic instability is not a problem in uh, cable straight bridges. However, cable straight bridges are comparatively uh, costlier than suspension bridges. Two truss bridges. A bridge truss has two main structural advantages. The primary member forces are axial load because it is a truss. In the open web system permits the use of a greater overall depth due to less Z load than for an equivalent solid web girder. Both these factors lead to economy in material and reduced jet weight. The increased depth uh, of the through truss also leads to reduced deflection in the bridge deck. It is economical for medium spin and also it is aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, pleasing. Okay, but the major uh, uh, group of bridges fall in this category where the main structure coincide with the deck line. All types of girder bridges, slab bridges, T beam, I beam, wide flame beam, concrete box girder, steel box, steel plate girder fall in this category of bridges. This is a concrete box girder, girder bridge shown in the picture. This is a box girder bridge on the right. You can see a girder bridge under construction. These are steel plate girders. Uh, there are some other pictures of a T-beam on the left top. Pre-stress girder, a slab girder, a box girder, and so on. Loads for bridge design. Loads to be considered in bridge design can be divided into two broad categories. 
these are two permanent loads and transient loads the permanent loads are self weight of girders and deck wearing surfaces wearing surface wearing surface is the bituminous surface and curbs and uh, parapets and railings utilities and luminaries light uh, the luminaries are the street light poles and pressure from arch uh, arch retainments there are two important dead loads types given by the h2 code one is called as dc which consists of dead load of structural components and non structural attachments and other is dw uh, which is dead load of wearing surface the material properties for pavement uh, are the bituminous densities where uh, this is used for the wearing surface for the calculation of wearing surface load is 140 pound per cubic foot and for concrete is 150 pound per cubic foot uh, the load factors for pavement dead loads are uh, the maximum load factor for dc type of load is 1.25 unlike 1.2 in the case of buildings and the uh, load factor for dw wearing surface load is 1.5 because the possibility of uh, uh, resurfacing or replacement of the wearing surfaces is high as compared to the addition in dead load or the self weight of the structure bridge transient loads are uh, liable loads due to vehicular railway and pedestrian traffic automobile is one of the most common vehicular liable load on most bridges it is the truck that causes the critical load effects and later loads due to water wind earthquake and ship collision shall also be taken into account in the design of a bridge following effects caused by liable load are also very important and are very important and must be considered in the design of a bridge impact or dynamic effects which uh, is produced due to vibration whenever a vehicle enters the bridge it will produce some vibration in the bridge so this dynamic the dynamic effects of this vibration must be taken into account in the design of bridge braking forces sometimes a vehicle may apply its brakes on the bridge in this may due to the friction between the wheels of the bridge and in the bridge deck uh, produce some kind of uh, forces horizontal forces so these braking forces shall also be taken into account in the bridge design centrifugal forces if bridge is given on a curve shall also be taken into consideration in the design of a bridge and the effect of other trucks simultaneously present shall also be taken into account okay uh, the h2 design load model is uh, consist of three distinctly different loads you will use the h2 uh, design loads uh, in the design of a bridge these three types of loads are design truck design tandem and design lane the is to uh, attempt to uh, capture a representative vehicle by these uh, uh, three types of loads uh, which produce critical effect in the load for for the purpose of the design for the purpose of design of the bridge the vehicle combination as described in h2 bridge specification lrfd means load and resistance factor design lrfd is uh, just like uh, strain design method in buildings the strain design method in buildings is uh, in fact uh, called as lrfd in bridges without any change there is no change in the concept and the approach uh, only the diff only there is difference in the name uh, of the uh, method or the approach of the design the design approach is the same in the bridge engineering it is called as lrfd and in the building it is called as strain design method okay <coughs> the vehicular design loads uh, as shown in this figure is uh, the, the design truck the design truck which is shown in this picture consists of uh, three axles 
the front axle uh, has a load of 8 kips, the middle axle has a load of 32 kips, and the rear axle has a load of 32 kips. Uh, it is not an actual truck, it is a uh, hypothetical truck uh, suggested by Gesto uh, in order to represent a, a critical truck load on the bridge for the purpose of design. The distance between the front and the middle axle has been kept uh, constant, equal to 14 feet. However, the distance between the middle axle and the rear axle is variable, has been kept variable from 14 to 30 feet. Uh, and this range has been kept, kept for the purpose of uh, producing critically, critical effects uh, on the bridge. So uh, this uh, distance uh, is a uh, kept such that to produce criti critical effect uh, on the bridge is variable. Okay. Then there is a design tandem. Uh, this design tandem basically represent uh, short, heavy vehicles. Uh, and the vehicle consists of only two axles, uh, front and rear, and uh, both axles carry the same load, uh, equal to 24 kips and the distance between the axle is 4 feet. So this design tandem has been kept to represent uh, a short, heavy vehicle. <clears throat> then there is a uniformly distributed load of uh, 0.04 kip per square foot, as shown on the left. Uh, and this is assumed to occupy a region of 10 feet. Uh, the ASTO has kept this load of uniform, un uniformly distributed load in order to represent a caravan of trucks, truck, trucks one after another. So in order to take into account the effect of uh, a large number of trucks one after another, this load, uh, 0.064 kip per square foot, has been uh, suggested by Ashto. Uh, if this 0 0.06 kip per square foot is multiplied by 10, then this load will be multiplied on a uh, one dimensional line element is 0 0.64 kip per foot as shown in this figure. In summary, there are three design loads which shall be considered in the design of a bridge, the design truck, design tandem, and the design lane. The H2 further recommends that these loads shall be superimposed by two ways to yield the live load effects, maximum live load effects, which are combined with other load effects. And then these ways of superposition are truck plus lane and tandem plus lane, whichever is high. <clears throat> then we have factor accounting for ductility, redundancy, and the operation importance of the bridge. This, fact, this factor load modifier is applied over and above all the load factors which exist uh, uh, in the code. And this load modifier did not exist in the building design, this exists only in the which is design as you will see in the next slides. Okay, in the next slides, we will only uh, now uh, be talking about the uh, reinforced concrete slab bridges. We will uh, discuss in a few slides how reinforced concrete slab bridges are analyzed in design, and then we will uh, try to uh, solve one design example. Simply supported reinforced concrete slab bridges consist of only a slab without any other supporting member such as girders. Typical bridges shown has been shown in this uh, picture. A slab bridge is widely used when the bridge crosses a minor road or small river. Slab bridges can be analyzed for the purpose of for the purpose of analysis. They can be modeled as three dimension, two dimension, one D models, depending on the availability of tools and software available. Uh, it is, if it is to be analyzed as 1D model uh, or line analysis, the bridge width will be divided into various strips as shown in this uh, picture. And these strips with a strip width of E are called design lanes. The design lanes are then transformed to line elements 1D model for line analysis. The movement are calculated for line analysis and the movement are then divided by the design lane width to get movement per foot for the slab. First of all, uh, this width of the bridge is lumped into a line 
and then uh, loads is point loads uh, load of the truck are uh, assigned are applied and this line is point loads is shown this picture and then the maximum bending moment uh, is obtained from this line analysis because it is easy to obtain maximum bending moment from the line analysis instead of a two dimensional analysis or surface analysis so when the maximum bending moment is obtained from the line analysis then the maximum bending moment must be divided by the design line width because uh, the truck which the truck load which has been uh, applied on this line is a pointer actually occupy certain width certain width and the width is called as design line width the design line width according to the h2 can be calculated by the equations as shown in this figure uh, in the first uh, uh, equation which is for single lane loaded uh, it is 10 plus 5 into square root of l1 w1 l1 is modified span length which is minimum of s where s is the span length s is the span length and 60 feet and w1 is modified h to h width uh, equal to minimum of overall width of the bridge or 30 feet for example if s is uh, s with a span length is 30 then uh, the minimum of 30 and 60 is 30 so l1 will be taken as 30 modified h to h minimum of overall width so if minimum overall width or if overall width is 20 feet then 20 will be taken as a w1 and if overall width is let's say 40 then 30 will be taken because minimum is 30 then <coughs> this is for a single lane loaded bridge for a multi lane loaded bridge the e is calculated in this manner it is 84 plus 1.44 into square root of l1 w1 must be less than or equal to w1 divided by nl l1 definition is the same as was for single lane loaded minimum of s and 60 feet however w1 is modified because this bridge is supposed to uh be is is a multi lane so it will uh, occupy more than one vehicle at uh, one at a time so the width uh, minimum minimum of overall width of bridge w1 or 60 feet instead of 30 for single lane road it has been uh, increased to 60 feet so in n nl nl uh, as shown in this equation is number of design lanes integer i n t means integer w divided by 12 integer w divided by 12 means that this should be rounded into an integer not a fraction so w is the width of the bridge if w is let's say uh, 30 feet 30 divided by 12 will give you 2 point something not exactly 3 <laughs> it will be rounded down to 2 because if it is 2 point something then 2 point something vehicles cannot be uh, loaded Uh, on the design lanes only two vehicles can be uh, accommodated on these lanes if it is 36 then 12 divided by uh, 36 divided by 12 will be 3 then integer 3 will be used in this equation w1 divided by nl and the least of these shall be taken as design lane design lane width shall be least of value uh, given by equation 1 and 2 the steps in the bridge uh, design are design of reinforced concrete slab bridge are shown uh, next first of all the thickness of the bridge will be calculated thickness of the bridge will be calculated and the thickness of the bridge is calculated by this equation equal to 1.2 into s plus 10 divided by 30 where s is the span of the bridge then uh, mm, the in the slab bridge in the slab bridges shear is not uh, a problem usually the slab bridges are designed only for flexion and in flexion you know the design capacity flexure capacity shall be greater than the demand capacity the demand ultimate demand <coughs> and mu will be calculated from this equation which is 1.05 times all the um, uh, the values uh, from the dead load and up, 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 obtained the values obtained from dead and live loads 1.05 is load modifier which did not exist in the case of building uh, but it uh, exists in the case of bridge design 1.25 is load factor for self weight 1.5 is for wearing surface and 1.75 is load factor for live load ml mll plus im im is impact you will see uh, mll plus im 
in the next uh, equations. MDC, MDC is calculated for a simply supported slab bridge by WDC into a square divided by 8. And MDW is calculated by WDW into a square divided by 8. Uh, MLL plus IM, which is the live load movement, IM is for impact. Impact, in order to take into account the vibrations which are produced due to vehicle, whenever a vehicle enters a bridge, 1.33 factor is uh, used. In other words, uh, the live load movements are increased by 33% in order to take into account the vibration vibration effect, which is called as impact, impact effect. So MLL plus IM will be calculated by 1.33 into N M tandem or M truck plus M lane. M lane will not be amplified by 1.33 because it is a truck or tandem which will produce vibration. Lane is uniformly distributed load and this uh, is recommended only to simulate uh, or to represent a uh, large number of trucks uh, if large number of trucks exist one after another. So this has been uh, this has been uh, represented by uniformly distributed load in, instead of uh, a vehicle. Okay, and these these things have been uh, finalized by Astro after years of research. Okay, <clears throat> and then finally we will convert this MLL plus IM uh, to a foot a per foot. We will divide this by E. Uh, we will divide this by E, and this will be converted to per unit width of the bridge. And then in the next step, we'll add them. <coughs> okay. For the purpose of uh, calcul calculation of uh, maximum bending moment due to the uh, truck load, the middle axle will be kept in the middle of the bridge, and the rear and the front axle will be kept at a distance of 14 feet. And so it is equidistant. Okay. <clears throat> this will give you uh, most of the time the maximum bending moment in the bridge. The tandem low, the tandem loads uh, shall be uh, kept such that uh, both the axles, uh, both the both the axles, both the axles having a load of 24 kip and 24 kip uh, are at two feet from the uh, mid point of the bridge. From the mid point of the bridge, if this is the mid point of the bridge, then the, they will be kept two feet, two feet on one side and two feet on the other side in order to produce maximum bending moment in the bridge. Because you know that uh, by placing these uh, loads, uh, truck, uh, uh, loads of the truck axle uh, at different location, you will get different bending moments. And we are interested in the maximum bending moments. So if maximum bending moment is to be obtained from these <coughs> loads, uh, it is suggested that uh, in the case of truck, the middle axle shall be kept at the midpoint and the rear and the front axle shall be kept at a distance of 14 feet each. In the case of tandem, uh, the axle, uh, axle shall be kept uh, two feet from the midpoint on the right and the left is shown in this figure and this will uh, give you the maximum bending moment. The Lane load is very easy because it is uniformly distributed load. So 0.64 k per foot load uh, will be applied on the line element, and uh, 0.64 into s square divided by it will give you the maximum bending moment. Okay. The reinforcement is the, the reinforcement <coughs> according to H2 shall be such that the longitudinal reinforcement will be calculated from the bending moments obtained from the uh, dead and live loads. However, uh, the bottom transverse reinforcement, the reinforcement uh, perpendicular to the main longitudinal reinforcement shall be equal to 100 divided by square root of the span length or 50% of the main reinforcement, longitudinal reinforcement, whichever is less, but should not be less than the shrinkage reinforcement. And the shrinkage reinforcement is just like the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement that we used in the case of building design. And double zero one eight in the grass area. Okay, <clears throat> these are uh, this, uh, this is a typical 
uh, slab bridge reinforcement shown in this uh, figure. The main reinforcement is shown uh, by dots because this section has been taken along the width of the bridge. This is the this is the width and this is the length of the bridge. So the section is taken a, a, a section is taken along the width of the bridge, and the longitudinal re reinforcement will be placed as bottom reinforcement along the length. So you will see these longitudinal reinforcement in the form of dots. The transverse reinforcement, which is the bottom bottom transverse reinforcement, will be kept above uh, the main reinforcement along the width of this uh, slab bridge, and this reinforcement shall not be uh, less than shall be equal to the least of 100 divided by square root of s or 50% of s, but shall not be less than s, minimum which is 0 0.0018 gross area of the bridge. And the top, uh, the reinforcement shall also be provided uh, in the top part of the bridge, two layers of reinforcement, both longitudinally and uh, in the transverse direction, transversely, the, the two layers will be provided. And both the uh, reinforcement shall be equal to the shrinkage reinforcement at least. This is a typical bridge 3D. You will be able to see how the reinforcement is actually placed in a bridge. The bottom longitudinal reinforcement is the main reinforcement, the bottom transfer reinforcement is as per H2, the top reinforcement in longitudinal and transverse direction also shown, and this will be equal to the shrinkage reinforcement 0 0.0018 into the grass area. Okay, next we will try to solve one design example. I'll look at the statement of this design example on the left. This is a span length of uh, year to design a simply supported slab bridge of RHL 93 level load. The span length of the bridge is 35 feet center to center of bearings. And the road over which is 45 feet curb to curb. Uh, we have to allow a load of future bearing surface of 3 inch thick, which is minus overlay. Concrete strength is 4000 and steel is yield 60 KSI. On the right, you can see in the figure, the span length from, curb, from bearing to bearing is shown as 35 feet. This is the plane of the bridge. In the plane, you can see the center line of the bridge and the width of the bridge with 12 feet, 12 feet, uh, two lanes, and then 10 feet shoulders. So 10 and 10, 20 and 24 is 44 feet total roadway width. Uh, and then there is a curve with a width of 15 inch on both sides. So 15 inch for plus 15 inch on both sides will give you a total uh, width of 46.5 feet. The thickness of the bridge is taken as H. The three future wearing surfaces shall also be included in the design. First of all, we will uh, calculate the sizes. The span length of bridge is given as 35 feet. Clear road width is 45, 44 feet curb to curb. And if I recur width of 15 inch, total width of the bridge is given as 46.5 feet. Minimum thickness of bridges per H2 shall be calculated from this equation 1.2 into S plus 10 divided by 30. And 35 for 35 feet span 1.235 plus 10. This gives us a thickness of uh, minimum thickness equal to 1.8 feet, which in inches is equal to 21.6 inch. We will round this up and we'll select 22 inch thick slab. Okay, uh, then the slab load uh, will be calculated uh, like this, 22 divided by 12 into 0.15, you know this. Uh, this is to convert into feet and uh, then multiply 0 0.15. 0 0.15 is the density of concrete. This will give us a load of 0.275 k per square foot or 275 pound per square foot. This is the load of self weight of the slab. The wearing surface for future, this is 3 by 12 into 0.14. This gives a 0 0.035 k per square foot, 35 pound per square foot load over and above the slab self weight. The slab movements 
0.275 is the self weight of the slab into 35 square divided by 8. So this gives us a 42 foot kip per foot bending movement. From the veering surface, 0.035 into 35 square, 5.3 foot kip per foot. Okay, now live load will be calculated from the bending movements of the design truck and design tandem. The maximum will be selected. For a design truck, we can calculate the bending movement very easily. As I said earlier, the middle axle will be kept in the midpoint of the slab bridge. Uh, and then uh, the rear and the front axle will be kept uh, each at 14 feet from the middle axle. In this way, the bending movement is calculated, which comes out to be 354 foot kip. Similarly, for tandem, the bending movement is calculated, and this comes out to be 372 foot kip, which is uh, higher than the bending movement for truck. So this will be finally selected instead of the truck bending movement. The lane movement is uh, 0.64 into 35 square divided by it, so it is 98 foot kip. And if the M, M tandem is greater than M truck, therefore we, we will use M, M tandem for further calculations. And as you have seen, that uh, the impact will be included now 1.33 M tandem. M tandem is 372, so 1.33 into 372 plus 98, which is the land load. So this is 593 foot cape. Now this 593 will be divided by E, because this 593 foot has been uh, calculated from line analysis. And the loads of the truck Excel were uh, um, idealized as line as uh, point loads, and in reality. Uh, the truck will occupy a certain width. So these uh, bending moment, this bending moment will now be divided by width E, and this width, the width E will be calculated uh, from the Ashto equations. Equation 1 is 10 plus 5 into square root of L1W1. L1 is modified span length, which is equal to minimum of S, which is 35 and 60, so 35 will be used. And W1 is modified edge to edge width, which is minimum of W1, 46.5 feet. In this case, are 30, so we'll use 30. After these values are substituted in the equation, E comes out to be 172 inch or 14.3 feet. The second equation of H2 is 84 plus 1.44 into square root of L1W1. W1 for multi lane loaded is a minimum of W1, 46 feet, 46.5 or 60, so it will be 46.5. And L1 is the same as single lane loaded. Now, in L, which is the number of design with integer W divided by 12, W is 44. It is 3 point something, but we will use 3, as I said earlier, because this is integer, so we will not use decimals in this. E is equal to 84 plus 1.4 into 35 into 46.5, which will be less than this. So this comes out to be 142 inch or 11.84 feet. So the least of all these uh, three values is 11.84 feet. So in, in our further calculation, we will, we will use E equal to 11.84 feet in order to convert the live load bending moment to bending moment per unit width. So this uh, 593 will be divided by 11.84. This comes out to be 50 foot k per foot. Now, the amplified or ultimate bending moment will be calculated from this equation, which is 1.05 uh, into all the bending moments, factor bending moments, which is 1.25 MDC. MDC was 42, MDW was 5.33, and MLF plus IM was 50. So. After these values are substituted for, uh, in this equation, so MU comes out to be 155.3 foot kip or 1863.6 inch kip per foot. And we have to design this slab bridge now for this bending moment. In the same manner as we have designed slabs and beams in the case of buildings. The movement is 1863.6 inch kip per foot. Uh, we have to uh, calculate the effective depth. The effective depth is calculated uh, in a similar manner. Uh, as we did uh, in the case of buildings, H minus cover minus half diameter of the bar. Cover is usually taken as one inch. So, uh, and uh, the diameter of the bar that we will be finally using is taken as one inch. It is zoomed as one inch. So, effective D will be 22 minus one, which is cover in minus half of this one up to the centroid of the one inch bar. This gives us an effective depth of 20.5 inch. AS minimum is 0.0018 into 12 inch, which is the per unit width of the bridge, and 22, which is thickness of the bridge. 0.47 square inch is the area of steel which is required as per H2. 
for shrinkage in temperature and also main reinforcement, minimum, reinf minimum reinforcement. Uh, for this MU, we will use uh, the trial in XL6 uh, um, procedure. First of all, we will use assume small a, let's say a 4 or 5 inch. We will calculate A's from this MU. And after uh, several trials, we can get the value of AS. The AS value after a few trials comes out to be 1.8 square inch. If we use number 8 bars, uh, so let's say we use number 8 bar and uh, for number 8 bar, the spacing of 14, 4, 4 in center to center will be required in order to uh, provide area of 1.8 square inch per foot. The distribution reinforcement is for the H2 requirement, which is the transverse reinforcement is bottom transverse reinforcement according to the code is 100 divided by square root of S. S is 35. So 100 divided by square root of S, 35 is 16.9 or 50%. The least of this is 16.9. 16.9% of the main reinforcement, 0.169 into 1.8 is 0 0.304 square inch. But this shall not be less than the shrinkage reinforcement, which is already calculated is 0.47 square inch. So the bottom transverse reinforcement will be provided equal to 0.47 square inch. If number 5 bar is to be used, then number 5 at the rate of 8 inch center center bars shall be provided uh, as transverse in bottom reinforcement. Similarly, the top reinforcement, both in the longitudinal direction and the transverse direction, shall also be provided equal to the shrinkage reinforcement. Uh, and the spacing shall not be uh, more than uh, 5 or 18 inch. Therefore, number 5 at the rate of 8 inch is also used as top longitudinal and transverse reinforcement. Finally, we will use uh, the main steel at uh, number 8 at the rate of 4 inch center to center. And transverse bottom reinforcement number five at the rate of eight inch center to center. Top steel, longitude and transverse both number five at the rate of eight inch center to center in this manner. The main steel is shown uh, in the form of darts because the section is being taken along the width of the bridge. So you will see the main reinforcement here in the form of darts. This is number eight at the rate of four inch. Uh, over the main reinforcement, uh, the transverse reinforcement with the spacing of number 5 at the rate of 18 center to center has been provided. Top layer of uh, uh, two layers of top reinforcement along the length and the width of the bridge are provided at number 5 uh, with number 5 at the rate of 18 center to center. So, this was all about the slab uh, bridge design. Next, I will show you some pictures, famous bridges around the world. This is the longest bridge in the world, uh, which is uh, 164,800 meter or 164 meter, or 164 kilometer. OK. This is overall uh, length of the bridge, not from Spain to Spain. From Spain to Spain, which is the longest Spain bridge, uh, from the uh, support to support, longest Spain bridge is the Pearl Bridge or Akashi Kayoko Bridge in Japan, you know, which is around two kilometers long bridge. This is the highest bridge in the world, Sido River Bridge, 462 meter high. You can see the bridge. This is uh, the Ends Down Bridge in Sakar. You can see. Jamshoro Bridge in Pakistan. This is Artak uh, Bridge, famous bridge. You must have seen this bridge. This bridge is uh, a box girder, post tension. It is it is basically a uh, balanced cantilever segmental box girder bridge. It is balanced cantilever segmental box girder post tension bridge. This is Mali Bridge in Karachi. This is the longest bridge in Pakistan, 5 km. Chinu Railway Bridge constructed in 1877. This is one of the highest bridges in Asia on an M2 motorway. This is the end of the lecture. If you have any question, you can ask your questions. Otherwise, the lecture is over.